hard work is the ticket. The ticket to prosperity is hard work all the time. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hi. It is Fat Tuesday. <laughs> it is Tuesday before Valentine's Day. Tuesday before Ash Wednesday. Okay, what date is it today? It is February 13 because tomorrow's Valentine's Day. Hey, whose hand is that? Okay, so February 13, 2018. And today we're going to read from still St. Mark. This gospel is a little tough to understand, but we will try to explain it as best we can. Okay, so it comes from St. Mark chapter 8, 14 to 21. <clears throat> The disciples had forgotten to bring bread. And they had only one loaf with them in the boat. So you imagine the disciples and Jesus must have been crossing uh, maybe Lake uh, Gennesaret, uh, going from one place to the other. And they forgot to bring uh, provisions with them. They forgot bread. Now Jesus enjoined them. Jesus talked to them in the boat and said, Watch out. Guard against the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. Now, the disciples could not understand what that meant. They said, they concluded among themselves that it was because they had no bread that Jesus is now talking about leaven. Okay? Okay. When he, came, he became aware of this, he said to them, Why do you conclude that it is because you have no bread? Do you not yet understand or comprehend? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes and not see? Ears and not hear? And do you not remember? <clears throat> Excuse me. When I broke the five loaves for the 5,000, how many wicker baskets full of fragments did you pick up? They answered him, 12. When I broke the seven loaves for the 4,000, how many full baskets of fragments did you pick up? They answered him, seven. He said to them, do you still not understand? So Jesus was here <laughs> maybe a little puzzled at the at the uh, inability of the disciples not to understand Jesus and not to understand the significance of his teachings and not to understand the significance of his miracles you have two people two sets of people here that Jesus is talking about okay one was the Pharisees and one was the disciples both of them received the same messages that Jesus was talking about, right? Both of them are witnesses to the same miracles, to the same things, the same messages of Jesus. But the Pharisees, who were supposed to be learned, were expected to understand these things better. The disciples were maybe forgivable because they were fishermen. They, they hardly studied. They, it's perhaps understandable that they do not get it right away. But from the tone of Jesus' voice, it looks like there's a little tinge of frustration, right? <laughs> Maybe Jesus is saying, how come you haven't understood me yet? But on the other hand, he was telling them, the disciples, Okay, uh, never mind. I can have patience on you. I will be explaining to you in private. Remember, as we were commenting in the past Gospels, in private, he explained the parables to them. Right? I will be able to explain these things to you a little bit more. But let me just tell you that for you to understand me better, for you to understand my message better, you should be careful not to be like the Pharisees. You should be careful about the leaven of the Pharisees. Now, let's talk about the leaven. What is leaven? Uh. Uh. 
<laughs> okay, we don't make bread here at home, and uh, you know this this art of bread making um, is somehow got lost uh, with many families already. But anyway, leaven is the stuff that that makes the bread uh, rise. You mix it with with dough and you know you knead it and you mash it and all of that and when you put it in the oven this is the stuff that makes the bread rice it is the stuff that gives volume to the bread it is the stuff that fills up the bread okay so it's the metaphor that jesus is using uh to to uh to describe what fills up the pharisees what gives them the stuff? What, what stuff do they have inside that makes them what they are? Okay? What they are. So let's talk about that. What are they? During the time of Jesus, what kind of disposition? There you go. That's the word I was looking for. What kind of disposition? What filled them up? To the extent that they could not get what Jesus was telling them. They didn't want to accept what Jesus was telling them. They didn't uh, care about the message of Jesus. Why, is, why were they like that? And the reason for that was because they were filled up inside of them. They were filled up with themselves. They were too preoccupied with themselves. Okay? They were so proud of themselves and of their learning and of their of their of their piety and and everything about themselves okay? the Pharisees were like that they were so full of themselves that they were blind towards Jesus they could not see who Jesus really was they could not see through and understand the supernatural meaning of jesus's miracles of jesus's life of jesus's message see they were so full of themselves and full of pride that they did not have supernatural outlook they did not have supernatural outlook they were seeing things all the time from their own human perspective from from the perspective of pride see? and if that is the way you look at things you will not see the supernatural meaning behind how God works. You are not going to see the supernatural value in the things that happen every day. You will not see the hand of God in the things that happen in your life every day. You are not going to understand what Jesus is trying to communicate to you in the same way that the Pharisees did not appreciate what Jesus was telling them, the message that Jesus came to bring for them. See? So on the one hand, you have people full of pride, full of themselves, like the Pharisees, who, because of their pride, could not manage to have supernatural outlook, cannot see things the way God wanted them to see things they could not see things from the perspective of god and on the one hand you had the apostles who are very simple people and perhaps in their simplicity in their simplicity also uh, could not understand much of what jesus was preaching to them and was talking to them about right but the difference was the difference was the apostles in their simplicity, in their simplicity, were humble. They were humble and they were willing to learn and they were willing to absorb everything that Jesus was talking to them about. Okay? And that was what filled them up. That, the word of God, was what gave them the volume that filled up their bread. See, their life, their uh, uh, source of, of that uh, 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 life that they were to live in the, uh, as apostles of Jesus Christ. 
See? So the leaven they had that filled them up was the word of God. Whereas the leaven that filled up the life of the Pharisees was their pride. See? So that is the difference. That's why Jesus said, be careful about the leaven of the Pharisees. Don't fill up yourselves with what filled up the Pharisees. Fill yourselves with the word of God. Fill yourselves with the love of God. Fill yourselves with supernatural vision, with supernatural outlook, so that you will see the things that are happening in the world, the things happening in your life from the perspective of God. See? That is, that is the meaning of this, of this parable. So that, as he was trying to tell his disciples, so that you will understand what the miracles mean. See? When I made the deaf uh, hear, the mute speak, when I, when I multiplied the bread uh, for the 5,000 and the 4,000, there is a supernatural meaning behind all of those. I was not just trying to feed people. I was not just merciful, all right, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, be concerned about their, their stomachs. No, there's something deeper in those miracles than what you see in the surface. But the depth of that message in those miracles and in the preaching of Jesus can only be understood if we have supernatural vision, if we look at things from the point of view of God, if we try to understand the things happening in our lives from the point of view of God. Okay? If we are very human in our outlook, if our outlook is just full of pride and full of ourselves, and we will only look at things from our point of view, we will never understand God. We will never understand how God works in our souls. Okay? Now, this is a very beautiful <clears throat> uh, gospel reading that comes right before Lent. Okay? Because it helps us to prepare for Lent. It helps us to put ourselves in the proper disposition for Lent. And what is that disposition? We should have the disposition of humility. Humility. The humility to see things from the point of view of God. What does God want in our life? How does God want us to live our life? We should use this whole period of Lent to try and examine ourselves and look deep into ourselves and ask, What fills me up? What fills me up? What consumes me? What gives me volume? What really gives me life? Is it the Word of God? Is it God's uh, 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 message to me that fills me up? Or am I full of myself? Am I just full of myself? Am I full of pride? Am I full of my own concerns? Am I full of what I like to do and not what God's will is for me? Okay? Those are big questions that we can ask ourselves this whole period of Lent. Okay? And we are being given a chance in this period of Lent to really do a very deep examination of conscience. To ask ourselves the real significant questions about what fills us up. Are we full of God's uh, uh, supernatural uh, realities? Are we filling ourselves with God or are we filling ourselves with ourselves? Okay. This whole Lent with prayer, fasting, and, and almsgiving, we can empty ourselves of ourselves. Okay. We can empty ourselves of, of what fills us up, of the things that we just like and the things that we want. And when we're empty of ourselves, then we can begin to fill up ourselves with God, to fill up our souls with the things of God, the things that concern God, okay? and the things that will make God happy with the way we are. Okay, so let's make good use of Lent. Let's make good use of these 40 days that God is giving us, and the church is giving us the opportunity to uh, understand ourselves and understand the will of God for ourselves better okay well enjoy your lead folks
prayer, fasting, almsgiving, beginning tomorrow, okay, and the rest of the 40 days until the uh, Holy Week and Resurrection. Okay, we'll see more of you hopefully this week. Uh, tomorrow, you know, uh, it's not an obligation, but it's a good uh, way to start Lent to go to Mass and uh, get some um, ashes uh, to remind ourselves of where we came from and where we're headed in this life. A very good way to uh, uh, empty ourselves of ourselves and remind ourselves that from ash we came, from dust we came, to dust we shall return. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> See you tomorrow, hopefully. Bye, everybody. Have a good day.